good evening today we are here uh to talk about the mkula industry the mkula business the mkula cartel and everything that you need to uh know because there's a lot of uh you know learning uh material that we can actually get to uh understand from this particular predicament so without further ado let's jump into the episode In Zambia, there has been national outcry regarding the illegal trade of a rare species of rosewood called Makula. These are illegal traders. These are illegal people shop, trading in Makula. Anyone is who is transporting is illegally doing it. Zambian President Edgar Lungu and his ministers have condemned the illegal trade, banning the cutting and export of this precious wood. What the Zambian people don't know is that behind closed doors, their politicians reportedly profit from the sale of Makula. So what we are here is to uh, try to buy some, uh, try to buy some uh, mokula. That's what I mean. Yes. Can you still do that's that? That's my business. Oh, that's your business? That's okay. my business. Yes. Okay. And is that uh, we're concerned of, is that impossible or is that illegal or legal? Uh, it was illegal, uh, but this is it's open. It's, it's what? It's open. Now it's open? People are taking it. Ah, okay. Uh, Secretly but not, or not to everybody. Ah, okay. okay. Not to everybody. No. Only for okay. How many? I alone. You, I cannot do it. You cannot do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you going to hire people? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course. Number three. Number three. As yeah. the minister or? Minister. Justice minister. The minister of justice, Mr. Given Lubinda, is apparently part of a network of top-level government officials involved in the illegal Makula trade according to individuals involved in the trade who spoke to undercover investigators. This network reportedly includes the state-owned company Zafico, the Minister of Land and Natural Resources Jean Capita, a senior chief in the Muchinga province Kafula Musungu II, and even the president's daughter Tisilo Lungu. Whatever comes in, she has an ear to the ground, she will visit no squishy. Daughter. The daughter of the president. Oh, yes. Of course. Whatever comes the moment she gets wind of it. What's your name? Uh, Tassila. Tassila. Is a counselor. The timber business is our side business. And the fact that knows everything. This illegal trade is being driven by demand in China. Chinese traders admitted to paying off government officials to circumvent Zambian law, implicating President Lungu himself. Uh, while Zambians suffer from the reduction in public funds, increased power outages due to load shedding, salaries withheld from civil servants, and the rising cost of food, According to traders, money from the still thriving Makula trade lines the pockets of politicians. In August 2019, the International Convention on Endangered Species took important steps to protect Makula. These measures are only as good as their implementation. The apparent corruption and exploitation of the species raises grave concerns about how the International Convention will be enforced in Zambia. Zambia's forests urgently need protection from this Makula cartel before they are plundered to extinction. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So this documentary was done uh, about two years ago in 2019, right? But ever since uh, it was created, we haven't had uh, an official statement as far as I'm concerned. Uh, of course, if I'm wrong, you can always, uh, you know, correct me. So, so far, with regards to all the people that were mentioned in this particular documentary, right? Nobody has ever clarified or come up with some sort of, uh, you know, statement and just clarifying all these allegations and please don't get me wrong i am not here to sort of uh, you know paint these people as bad people and i'm not here to sort of uh, you know judge uh, because everybody is innocent until proven guilty but when such important you know issues are raised it is very uh, important and uh, it is very fundamental for you know the name people to sort of uh, you know defend themselves and just basically get to clarify and clear the air so 
the, the, the main reason why I am recording or rather doing this particular live stream is I want to talk about value addition. And I also want to talk about the reason why Zambia and Africa doesn't really get to develop uh, despite it having abundant mineral resources and, uh, you know, natural resources as well, plus a whole lot of different uh things that we can use or rather get to utilize such as uh, arable land so this particular live stream is obviously going to be talking about those uh you know uh things that i have uh earlier talked about and this is one of the reasons why you have to share this particular uh you know live stream because we are going to be diving deep we're going to talk about zafico the reason why the zafico managing director so of uh, recently resigned so there's a lot of things to unpack and this is one of the reasons why i am kindly as uh, asking you to share this video right now in all the different groups that you belong to on your facebook uh timeline and all those different pages so my name is uh muna nalula nalula and z corner is the leading voice for the zambian youths i do understand this is sue season everybody is getting to you know like throw around these uh uh you know lawsuits and all that stuff so this is one of the reasons why you know i spent a lot of time with my lawyers you know going through the material because I do not want to point a finger at anybody and just sort of, uh, you know, paint them to be uh, something that they are not. And this is one of the reasons why having dialogue is very important. Remember, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. And I'm cordially inviting, you know, uh, former Republican President uh, Edgar Lungu, Tasila Lungu, Jin Kapatan, basically everybody that is involved in this particular, you know, alleged fraternity to come and vindicate themselves because we need to have dialogue. And just because we might have divergent views doesn't really mean that we can't really have common ground. So now let's talk, let's talk about value addition and the importance of value addition. So a lot of you might be saying, hey, if any film could have if there's no it's not really that significant it's just like any regular tree you know but this time around i want you to show you i wanted to show you the real value of mukula because the mukula industry in china and in a whole lot of different asian countries is worth more than 25 billion it is a 25 billion plus industry right it is actually creating them a whole lot of different wealth and people are getting to make a whole lot of money but why are zambians native zambians people who get to you know sort of uh chop these trees down why are we not seeing the effect on the prices of mukula and this alleged huge industry so now uh, let's watch a very important revelation from uh, one of our Zambian counterparts. Uh, well, he's actually, uh, I don't know whether he's a Chinese resident or a Zambian student, you know, studying in uh, China because there is a musician, uh, there is a museum that is uh, displaying, you know, Mukula artifacts and uh, just art basically made out of Mukula. So let's get to listen to him because he's got very good insight. Mukuro, you over Pangira Mukuro. Each chimo, I'm a block, say a god yet that. Each chimo. But the Zambia zone is concerted for Makuzambia. Mukura Bagam. At your own self, Makuzambia Mukure. Mukura. So, each chimo, Tam Kuret. It's uh, worth three bars of gold. So we have been educated. Justice. No. All right. So just like you heard him say, right, that one thing, whatever they did with it, it is worth three bars of gold. Three bars of gold. Now, remember what I talked about when it comes to value addition, right? And where zambia and africa basically gets to make a whole lot of you know a whole lot of different uh mistakes and uh, why we never ever get to benefit from our natural resources and the things that we have is because we do not know the power of value addition mukula vatema muzambia boom vashta export uh china 
somebody makes this particular thing and then this thing is worth three bars of gold chimofe chin to chi chichira mwana kwati ni china and chi sculpture or chi art or whatever they did it's worth three bars of gold okay now a lot of you might be wondering saying hey muna how much is one bar of gold okay now let's let's take a look at the price of one bar of gold i hope mne kutika so now if we check on google okay as of february 2020 the price of the bar of gold has ranged from 623,000 US dollars. Okay, so I really hope this uh, information is very valid, right? Uh, but according to this, uh, to the statistics here, this is what we're seeing. As low as six, uh, this is 6,481, uh, 6, this is per 100 grams, okay? But if you talk about one bar uh, of gold, right? Kadaka, kadi brick, kadaka, gold, kadia. It's worth 623,000 US dollars. That's one bar of gold. So, right? It's worth three bars of gold. Now, if you do the mathematics, simple mathematics, get to multiply this particular amount, uh, 623,000 US dollars by three. How much is that worth? Okay, so this is basically worth more than 1.8 million US dollars. It's China Vechin Tocho Mone Value addition. And where is this material coming from? It's coming from Zambia. Abatema ifim tfia mukula. They don't even know the value of mukula. And by the way, let me also show you this amazing report, right? Because you have to understand that mukula is an endangered species. Okay? It's a wasting asset. And the thing about Mukula is it really grows very slow. So I'm and we're exporting it at cheap prices because I bet you the people who are cutting Mukula, you know, the, 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 the small scale people, the low earning uh, income type of people who are getting to do all these nasty jobs like in the beginning of the value chain, right? Because you have to understand that in order for them to have this processed product, right? It starts from somewhere. There is a supply chain, a Zambian somewhere, a poor Zambian somewhere goes and cuts the tree. They don't even know that they are having one million dollars worth of isampo. Isampo worth more than one million dollars. At the mafia kachemuti, five hundred kwacha. You know, he does what he does, life goes on. But the people who are at the top of the supply chain, they are making tons of money because they understand the importance of value addition. Now let's get back to this particular article because it's very it's very sad and it's very re uh, revealing. So the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species sites recently made changes on the international restrictions on trade in plants and wildlife. Among the changes related to tropical timber is to include the slow growing mukula trade scientifically known as uh, uh, this, this is the Latin word for mukula a type of rosewood of southern and eastern Africa, okay? So basically, Mkula is a rare, delicate, and slow-growing timber species that grows in the Miombo woodlands of Africa, a unique ecosystem of scrub and savanna south of the Congo Basin. Mkula is the local name of rosewood. So according to Greenpeace, massive corruption and high demand in the Chinese furniture industry are driving illegal mukula logging in southern democratic republic of congo and zambia now a lot of you might be wondering saying hey mona what the hell do we even care about mukula why should we worry about why mukula is being exported at this you know very extreme fast rate and why it is important for Zambians to understand that if for former Zambians not kwaten Congo de Shingai, not Trefiro Kuripira, ten billion or eleven billion dollars worth of debt, but we are exporting uh Mukula, which is uh, a twenty five billion dollar industry in Asia. Does it make any sense to you? Can somebody please decipher to me how that makes any sense? Right now we are, you know, gallivanting and trying to, uh, you know, finesse and uh, scavenge for help. But we have Isampo, 
Mukula, which is making an industry which is over 20 billion US dollars. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, now let's continue reading this. So why is there so much demand for rosewood in China? First of all, you have to understand that Mukula is a very unique and rare type of species. Okay, it's a rare type of product. And in China, right, rosewood, also known as Hongmu in Chinese, literally means red wood. It is, uh, it refers to a range of richly hued, durable, tropical hardwoods that are red in color and they are widely used in furniture processing in China. Okay, although Mukula is not labeled as rosewood in Chinese rosewood national standard, tim timber traders and consumers still demand it for its color and strength and durability. Let's look at the demand for rosewood in the Asian countries. Now, this part is very important, okay, because we have to understand the market. This is one of the reasons why we need to have leaders who understand markets who understand the, the the importance of value addition leaders who understand how to create value and be able to benefit you know financially if you know what i mean so now let's look at the reasons why mukula that we own and we export and we basically do not get to benefit anything from it because we do not understand the market that mukula has so to all the people who have studied the uh, economics right I'm sure you've heard about the Veblen effect. The Veblen effect really talks about, uh, you know, consumer products and why expensive things are highly sorted after. This is one of the reasons why, for example, bags like, uh, you know, Birkin bags, uh, you know, designer clothing are highly overpriced because they are sort of uh, very expensive and they are very limited. Okay, so Mukula falls into this uh, type of product. And the reason why Zambia doesn't really get to benefit off of Mukula because Mukula industry alone can really get to really develop Zambia if only we harness the power of understanding the supply chain, the value chain, and how we can add value. So when we export Mukula, we export it raw. Boom. Some of them are legal, some of them are illegal. China. Kudaku China, they understand. They understand how to convert dirt and make it into pure gold. Okay, that's obviously, you know, just, um, it's a metaphor, okay? So, basically, they add value to it. And when they add value to it, right, it becomes very, very expensive. Wealthy people in China get to purchase these furnitures or this type of art, and they get to really get to make a whole lot of money. In the meantime, if you look at the people who are harvesting or rather chopping Mukula, right? But they have two zare maybe two hundred kwacha, which is like a ten dollars. So the people who are literally at the bottom, they do a lot of hard labor. They get to make ten dollars. Kunta and Shkude in the value chain, right? People are making close to two million dollars on a small logo, maybe like if you tattoo fifty Mukula, but they banga three million dollars. Do you really see any sense in that? Okay, so now let's continue looking at this article because it has got a lot of amazing points. So China imported on average 350 rosewood logs per hour in the first half of 2016. China also imported uh, or rather recorded a 700% increase in the import of African rosewood logs and saw wood since 2010. Rosewood logs import, uh, imported into China have soured by about 1,300% from 2009 to 2014. As of 2016, there are 30,000 companies in China, uh, in China's rosewood industry, generating retail revenues of more than 25 billion US dollars. So let me even, you know, uh, zoom this so that you can see that, uh, you know, uh, this is not uh, a lie and this is very authentic information. So take a look at this statement. As of 2016, more than 30,000 companies in China's rosewood industry generating retail revenues of more than 25 billion US dollars. In 2016, 
30,000 Chinese companies. So now get to do the mathematics. How many people are these 30,000 companies employing in China? I bet you're a lot, a lot. So if you really get to understand the problem that Africa has, the problem that Zambia has is leaders who are number one and ethical because there is no way you can be presi uh, you know presiding over so much wealth you know and then getting your people to only earn peanuts literally peanuts when we're talking about unemployment you know we're talking about the high levels of uh, you know graduates who are basically indulging in you know different despicable uh, despicable things because they do not have any employment meanwhile china has you know generated a lot of revenue this industry is about 25 billion us dollars there's over 30,000 companies in china processing and value adding to the mukula that zambia and congo gets to export for peanuts let's all moon to zona the people who are running this particular value chain right maybe one thousand dollars per truck or maybe i don't know how much money they make but whatever money that they make it is incomparable to what the people what they are making so if you get to really understand and scrutinize why would a leader get to allow this to happen when there's a lot of unemployment rate and the most important thing that we have to understand is uh you know the leaders that we have are not the problem the problem is between you and i the citizens i've told you about this information what are you going to do about it are you going to continue you know being ignorant about the fact that there is a 25 billion dollar industry in asia which is being facilitated by our exports does it really make any sense? So this is one of the reasons why we need answers, okay? And in the beginning of this live stream, right, I told you, I'm not here to paint anybody, uh, you know, dark or to cast a red or rather black shadow on anybody because everybody is innocent until proven guilty. I know it's lawsuit season. And then, uh, you know, the prominent lawyers such as uh, Makebi Zulu, they are on high demand because Valela some of my lawsuits. But I'm not here to point any fingers at anybody because everybody is innocent until proven guilty. And this is one of the reasons why I'm saying as Zambians, we need to, to demand and ask, uh, you know, for leaders to be accountable. This is one of the reasons why I am expecting Tosila Lungu or even former Republican president who I really respect because he's an elder person. He's equivalent to my parents, but we still need to hold them accountable. There is a pending problem here. There was a documentary that was done in 2019 by Business Wire. So if there's anybody to sue, do not sue me. Sue Business Wire because I'm getting this documentary from Business Wire. Okay, so we need answers. The people of Chawama, because I believe Tashila Lungu is the MP of Chawama. Lerova Youth Bam Chawama, I do not want you to sleep. Tomorrow is a Monday. Go to Parliament, go to the offices, ask Tashila Lungu to explain and give clarifications with regards to these allegations that were produced by the business wire so the youth muchawama at this particular moment organize yourselves i already gave you the blueprint we need to keep our leaders accountable and please do not really get me wrong this is not a personal vendetta against uh you know former republican president edgar lungu or his daughter this is all about leaderships uh this is all about leadership when you are participating in governance roles you have to understand that you are liable to public scrutiny. Okay? But yes, we understand this family is absolutely powerful. It is wealthy. But we need our people to eat. We need Zambians to be employed. Why are we exporting Mukula at extreme cheap prices and making other countries extremely rich? Why? Why are we having a lot of, uh, you know, 
uh, unemployed graduates, when we have an industry that can literally create 10,000 companies and be able to sustain the economy? Why do Zambians have to pay high tax, uh, high taxes in order for us to sort of, uh, you know, add revenue to the budget because 30% of our budget goes to sort of, uh, you know, getting to pay for our debt that we have accumulated in the past 10, 11 years. Why should we go through that when we have value addition opportunities and can really get to turn around our whole country? In Zambia, there's a lot of different resources that we can really get to harness and basically get to turn our situation around. Muzambia, Vengi Abalanda. Inchushi, Vengi. Abanabanshiwa, Vengi. People who are seeking for opportunities are a whole lot. So why are we going to let a few individuals running governmental roles to overstep on all the, uh, all the you know, misfortunate people's rights? Is it any does it make any sense to you ah, some people don't even have even something to eat they do not even know what they are going to eat tomorrow they do not even know what they are going to or rather how they are going to survive 30 days from now so does it really make sense for us to sit here and pretend as if everything is all right when we have actual solutions viable solutions that we can really get to implement and turn around the whole situation I'm sure to those of you who travel, I always keep on citing this example. If you go to the United Arab Emirates, everybody is eating. Namwaku Dubai, kula manafe, icho, Ferrari, nach parking, here, Chevrolet, uh, you know, uh, supercars are everywhere. The citizens do not even worry about how they're going to eat or rather what they're going to do in the next 30 days. It's because their government looks out for the people because their government, at least for the most part, they make sure that everybody is catered for. And just like I keep on saying, Zambia has got a very small population. We are only 18 million people. Everybody on a monthly basis can be able to generate a $1,000 but our leaders are very selfish our leaders lack discipline and our leaders do not even really uh, want to add value to all the different natural resources the thing is our leaders know these things our leaders know the value that mukula has our leaders know that they can turn around zambia but you know who really messes up it's you the population you the zambian people because you've got a very low standard zambian population has got a low standard of the leaders that we allow how come since 2019 there hasn't been an official statement about this particular documentary in modern countries in developed or rather you know established uh, established countries right people would have been resigning by now people would have already uh you know cleared the air by now but you the zambians you your standards is so low you really allow everything to fly and you're too comfortable you're too comfortable you're, you're too satisfied you're happy and you don't do anything about it you know so this is the problem that we have the leaders do what they have to do because they understand i'll easily get away from from this i'll easily maneuver and wiggle my way out but for my Zambians, if we just put our foot down, because in actual reality, right, if you look at, if you compare the wealthy people in Zambia and, uh, you know, the underprivileged or rather the not so wealthy people, because I don't want to say poor people, because that's very, uh, it's, it's very degrading, right? So uh, if you look at the people who are not so wealthy in Zambia in comparison to the wealthy people, we outweigh the wealthy. So why are we scared of the wealthy? You know, so this is one of the reasons why we have to put or rather elect leaders who understand how to create opportunities. Opportunities are, are not really going to be given to you on a silver plate. And by the way, I'm not saying get money from the wealthy and cook better for Abantu for free. I'm saying let's get to educate the masses on how to problem solve and how to come up with solutions. Okay, we've got unemployment solutions, but we've got uh, Mukula. We've got an opportunity to create a $25 billion industry. We've got the opportunity to create companies within Zambia that really get to add value. And then they get it, they get to export it uh, to China. That is absolutely possible. But all of a sudden, right? In 2020, we heard about the Mkula fiasco. We heard about these things. And guess what? 
the population didn't really get to do anything so this is one of the reasons why i am coming to you because you hold a green national registration card because you hold the zambian green passport and you were born in zambia you are, you are most likely going to return to zambia or you're going to be buried in zambia so zambia is your country and your individual role is highly crucial because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link so this is one of the reasons why we need to ask for responsibility and accountability so right now i'm talking to you the uh, the people from chawama this is your time to shine mwema yutsi bakuzo baku chawama because uh, tasila lungu is your current mp do not go there storming and uh, you know causing havoc do it in a civilized manner go and ask why is this documentary involving you what information do you know just ask properly you know she's compassionate because she's a woman she also wants to see zambia develop as well and if she's got any clarification she's going to be able to say ah you know so you know i don't have anything to do with it and all that stuff if she does that right she's going to come out as a darling everybody's going to love Tasila Lungu and saying ah Tasila Lungu is all about justice she really genuinely wants the people of Zambia to sort of uh, you know move and progress you know but if we're going to that direction of saying ah just because this young man was talking about Mukula and I was kind of my name was uh, sort of mentioned I'm going to give him a lawsuit what are we doing what are we doing this is a genuine question that I'm raising this is a genuine, authentic clarification that I need, okay? And the, the easiest thing that you can do, especially as a leader, especially as somebody who is being looked up to, you are representing Chawama. The people of Chawama have entrusted you with this morality. And uh, um, I, 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 don't, I, I don't even know whether this is a word, uh, um, ethicalness. You have to be ethical. You have to look out for the most vulnerable in all parts of Zambia especially your community. So we are asking Vatasila Lungu, former Republican president with all due respect because Muleva uh former Republican president Edgar Lungu, what is this about the Mukula industry and why is your name implicated? Just come up with a statement, get to clarify this situation and everybody moves on. There is no need to have lawsuits and all that stuff because we are just genuinely inquisitive and we want Zambia to progress. We want everybody, all parts of Zambia, the four corners of Zambia, everybody at least has to have a decent meal. Everybody has to have access to water. Everybody has to have, you know, the right of association without favor, without fear. This is what we need. We want Zambia to progress as a collective we want everybody to have equal opportunities and this is one of the reasons why we have to take advantage of the natural resources that god blessed us with and we are only here to ask questions we're not here to point fingers at you and say no because we're giving you the benefit of the doubt and we're allowing you to vindicate yourselves because you were in governmental roles you are accountable you are liable to the inquisitiveness of the general public because that's why you swore and took an oath to serve the people of zambia servitude is a, a double-edged sword so whatever happens to the pendulum, whether it's, it swings back and forth, you swore, uh, or rather you took an oath, you know, to serve the people of Zambia. And leadership is all about standing your ground, being ethical, promoting morality in good and in bad times, and offering clarifications and soothing the hearts of people. Because Abare Chura Muzambia Vengi. And the thing is, you should be able to not only think about yourself and your circle, think about the people who are in the deepest part of the most rural areas of Zambia. How are they coping? How are we going to be sleeping when that particular mother, that particular, you know, father is struggling? 
then we have all this abundant opportunity and natural resources why aren't we taking advantage of it so now before i really get passionate about this because this is very uh this is a passion of mine and to be honest with you i don't like people suffering and that stuff but it doesn't really mean that you should use your your initiative but everybody should have an equal opportunity to elevate themselves this is what i'm talking about this is one of the reasons why you see me here like once in a while because i want the whole entire population to do better i want the whole entire population to be able to give themselves opportunities to elevate their lives and we're only going to do that if we concentrate on value addition if we make leaders accountable and if we have a, a very high bar in terms of who we get to sort of uh, elect into these leadership roles because they are very important and instrumental to the development of zambia now anyway let's talk about one of the reasons why uh zafiko uh exportation of mukula has been uh implemented because uh you know just like you heard right as soon as the upnd government under uh president uh haka in the hichlema right the, one of the first things uh that they did is halt the exportations of timber because they understand there's a lot, lot of money which is being siphoned out of zambia and one of the good things that i saw is you know the the managing director of zafiko resigned and this is what we need to allow our leaders to do if you are in a compromising situation of course these things happen so what you need to do in order for you to protect your dignity because ichalo vantu the people who elect you vantu in order for you to like hold your dignity right and uh, sort of uh, protect your ethical or moral bubble right you need to remove yourself from compromising situations this is one of the reasons why nangukurika skando muzambia right vamambara tabashita resigned vamukukuru va yeah to arufiana na kurufiana anyway but i digress so moving on uh, Zafiko MD resigns. Zambia Forestry and uh, Forest Industries Corporation PLC Zafiko, the agroforestry company at the center of the lucrative Mukula export, has announced that its managing director, Kangwavalia. So there's another name popping up Kangwavalia. Kangwavalia, Mr. Kangwavalia. Honorable Walia, as you love to be addressed because allegedly everybody in Zambia is honorable. So give us some insight what has been happening at zafiko what has been happening with regards to the exportation of the lucrative mukula why did you resign what things have been happening do we need a full extensive audit of what has been happening at zafiko we need those answers okay and the other thing that we need to talk about is uh you know there are a few citizens uh, from western province who have been very vigilant right uh because we are receiving reports that uh, people in uh, western province were able to intercept uh mukula exportation and all that stuff so as you can see right over here on the 23rd of september eight trucks la uh, laden with uh, mukula logs intercepted in mongo so big up to everybody in mongo big up to all the vigilant youths all the vigilant citizens who are demanding for sort of uh, accountability big shout out to everybody who's doing that you know and one of the things that you youths need to understand is you need to take action but what are you doing go there be active create your company you know tell them if i got a money star export the money to stay include the mukura nising and so on 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 to fear pity manja watabanto wa kumongo if people in mongo sort of revolt and just put their feet down and say you know mukura the protocol area until we see certain changes are you telling me that the, the these people are not really going to bend to your will but the thing is now mshipula now mulala what are you doing on facebook do something so to all the youths in all these different parts of the country time to mobilize ourselves numbers always win the majority always wins okay so there's no way you should be complaining about unemployment i'm giving you the plug 
I'm giving you uh, sources of lucrative businesses. Last time I told you about the Zambia Development Agency. I told you, Abena Faith Musondogo allegedly, reportedly, and all that jargon, all those jargons for, you know, lawsuits in case we get to like receive these things. Abena Musonda, Eko Bare Funyama Medion Zok. What are you doing there? But do it in an intellectual and responsible way. Do not cause havoc. Not if you have a violence. Just organize yourselves respectively and form an organization. Make sure you hold these people accountable. Start exporting or cultivating or whatever. Just do it like in a way whereby everybody gets to collectively benefit. Not to be selfish. Because we need to collectively progress. Even on a personal level. Right? Everybody is a boss. Everybody can literally buy anything that you want in a club or at a restaurant. Not he, you know, you're the only good guy. You're the only guy who's progressing. Won't say, but I'm a broke, broke, no of a big buyer. You know, you order. Everybody does well collectively. So I want us to cultivate the mentality of always uplifting one another. Everybody, not just because uh, forget about that. Everybody can collectively work and eat because, it, uh, you know, opportunities are endless. There is an abundance of opportunities and always have, you know, an uh, abundance mindset because there is no way we're going to collide. But this jealousy and the crab in the bucket mentality always, we, we try to like, uh, you know, push others down because you just want to benefit. I'm telling you, if everybody's bowling, if everybody's making money, we're all going to be peaceful and everybody's going to be happy and satisfied. So let's collectively help one another. So our youth in every constituency, hold your MPs liable. Go to them because you elected them. Citizen arrest, cause a revolt, do what you have to do. We've got a very listening government, you know? Do what you have to do. Put in those checks and balances. Make those changes. Everybody gets to eat, you know? So it's all up to us because citizens of Zambia, the Zambian population, has got a very low standard. This is one of the reasons why Tamude Papa Papa Boman Nusambo Nabasala Papa Papa Boman Nusambo is making like a whole lot of you know that this man is making sense all of a sudden because he understands that the bar has been reason you know the bar has been elevated so he needs like uh, you know you know catch up and sober up that's what we need you know we do not want to have a society where people look up to people like innocent kalumanji with no due respect you know so this is what we need we need to do or rather take action on and individual basis i've brought you this information do something about it create your organization i don't know grow go with a group of people go to the city council then you know ask for answers there's absolutely no crime in that it's better why prison 10 days you build up your name and you put yourself in a position where you're going to be able to like uh, you know uh have a job or whatever and get to improve your 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 family it's better to do that we are tinef taka taka we are tina ku prison ku prison you know especially for us men especially for us guys if you look at all the prominent people why pita mo majero why pita mo masels it's inevitable if you're going to like make an impact you're obviously going to ruffle a few feathers it comes with the territory but if you're so dwanzi <laughs> like uh simon uh you know where we usually say zambians are dwanzi you know you're being you're afraid you're not going to do anything you know you're, you're just going to die mediocre and uh, stuff so we're not tina ourselves you know, even if something happens so long, your 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 cause is legitimate. You know, so long I'm just but you think they had like a legitimate reason. To allow on camp here, we pay for your bill, you're out, you do your own thing. But the thing is, let's keep our leaders accountable. I'm not I'm not really inciting violence. Okay, because uh you guys were going to be like, ah, that young man was inciting violence by social media. No, no, this is not what what, what I'm saying, Buana. 
This is not what I'm doing here. This is not what I'm advocating for. I'm advocating for accountability on a personal level and in public, especially to the people who are stepping up and going into governmental roles. Why must I care about MP? Why must I care about president if you don't want to be scrutinized? Or if you're a lawsuit, see? You know? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's continue uh, doing some more productive stuff because, you know, I get passionate about these things. Okay, so let's listen to this because uh, we had uh, a recent, uh, you know, ban on the exportations of Mukula. So now let's get to listen to this. Continues to be harvested and exported in excess of the authorized amounts at the expense of common poor persons. The ban accelerated personal interest among a few in the industry at the expense of the many. It actually protected the illegal trading and export. Since the vocation of the ban on the 13th June 2017, harvesting of Mukula has continued. The exemption clause has been abused with impunity. It is therefore necessary to bring sanity and protect the extinction of the Mukula species. To bring equity in the right of timber, it is therefore necessary to suspend the harvesting and export. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So that was an official banning of the export of Mukula. Um, this is obviously uh, very temporal. It's only going to be done until uh, thorough auditing is going to be done because we need to add value to Mukula because it's a huge industry. We are like literally exporting. Chimo, let me give you an example. Chimwati, you were now got the mountain, right? We didn't sell it. Then, Mumpia Shove. Muri hundred thousand kwacha. Iwe ure for concert but mutumba muri hundred thousand kwacha. And then wapere toro shidi ove kumunove. Ata kansisha kwe toro shiri ngawasisha iri toro shipari fifty kwacha i fifty kwacha wisa unshitira muama bans. This is basically what we are doing. We are exporting a sample equate you know the capability of creating 30,000 jobs or rather 30,000 companies. Well, let, let's even put like a third of that. A third of 30,000 is like uh, literally 10,000 companies, right? We can create 10,000 companies and get to do these things and get to add value. If it means getting to invite our brothers and sisters from the far east. And by the way, I really love Chinese people. I really love Asian people. To all my Asian people out there, I really love and adore you, especially the Chinese. Because if you look at how innovative the Chinese are, oh my goodness, we can really get to learn a lot of things. And I'm so appreciative of, uh, you know, the Chinese community and the Asian community adding a lot of value to our society. And this is one of the reasons why we need to learn from them. Saying, Mweba Nensu how can we you know do these things and they'll be gladly able to do that so long we are able to stipulate our conditions negotiating is a two-way thing you need to set your price and say this is what i want and then we're going to conduct business and everybody gets to be jovial you know what i'm saying so this is no way trying to paint uh, the Asian community or our friends from the Far East. I really adore you. I really love, you know, how innovative Chinese are. Because if you look at most of the, the, the biggest uh, products, the biggest companies in the world, uh, Apple, it's mostly done in China. Chinese do it. You know, if you look at uh, other emerging industries such as uh, blockchain technology, if, you, if, if to all the people who do cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, you know how powerful, you know, the Chinese or rather the Asian community is with regards to innovation. I'm talking about Chao Zingpeng, CZ of Binance. He's created an, a whole ecosystem of value. 
we really need to harness and learn from our uh, from our asian counterparts because they were also in our shoes a long time ago so this is not in any way trying to paint you know these amazing or uh, amazing innovative awesome people because i really really love and respect them all i'm trying to say is as zambians we need to understand and learn how to add value and everybody is innocent until proven guilty so that's all i had for you uh my name is um, nalula nalula do your googles trivapa z corner you can email me my email is like literally here uh, muna at zcorner.com check the email in the description box below so in case you've got any questions and just like i told you right i really want to uh duly extend my invitation to all the people who are involved because i want to have a conversation because it's all about dialogue you know it's all about getting to have common ground because sometimes when you look at things from a one-way perspective you know from one angle your vision is kind of blurry if you know what i mean so this is one of the reasons why i'm saying look uh, I mean, at the don't really take this as a job, you know, and something that you should be like, ah, oh, boys, let's kill him. I mean, not literally kill, but I'm saying let's let's deal with him. Let's uh, let's sort him out. You know, that chap, we know him. <laughs> let's get to teach him a lesson. No, no, no. This is just an opportunity to clarify and come out on top. And you can actually get to use this opportunity to sort of uh, cement yourself as this, you know, uh, a leader who's concerned and who's really uh, excited to offer help and offer clarifications when times of trouble come through. So this is a very good opportunity for you to like elevate the way Zambians perceive you because you know we understand like this is common knowledge. If you look at the patriotic front, right, the history is very very questionable. You know, in terms of how zambians were feeling and the general mood you know it's very questionable and you belong to that particular party yo you know dad is uh, you know we don't want to talk about these things but this is an opportunity for you to get to elevate your status and get to really like set the tone and define who you really are and get to differentiate yourself from the patriotic friend and from the legacy and all that stuff you can really get to like cement yourself as tasila lungu so you know this is out of love this is out, out of compassion so don't really look at this as an attack because you studied in the united states of america where you have democrats and republicans literally hosting each other you saw the interview with trevor noah and tommy lauren tommy lauren was like a blatant uh, you know republican figure right and i believe uh trevor noah sort of uh, uh you know leans towards uh, the, the democrats and they were able to have a conversation to converse it and talk about their points and really get to learn from each other and by the end of it all they had common ground so it's important to have dialogue i want to see a zambia where the opposition and the ruling party are in the same room you know debating talking talking about things this is one of the reasons why i was one of the strongest advocates for president lungu to have a debate with the biggest contender at that particular time uh haka in the hichilema but we didn't really get to see that because we are afraid of dialogue i also love what alice musukwa did with regards to ben lombe alice musukwa invited uh ben lombe and she asked ben lombe you were ben lombe are you gay what is this over the realm for and ben lombe was able to like vindicate himself and say and say you know i'm not gay i'm just a cross dresser because i want to promote my business i want to you know uh identify with my clients this is one of the reasons why i put on wigs if you know what i mean so that type of dialogue is what we need so this mentality of always crushing somebody and always trying to like suffocate and silence somebody and say ah if you talk about this we'll deal with your family you know look up where that come on man we're, we're trying to have a civilized uh, dialogue here and whatever actions you took uh you know whatever side uh, you know of the spectrum i'm sure you've got valid reasons and you can always vindicate yourself you know so this is what we need as a true democratic country let's ask questions let's 
ask uh, you know for clarifications and get vindicated because most of the times we label people and get to pen them and just have like a wrong perception i'm looking forward to having a day or rather having a conversation with faith from sonda and just asking her about faith give you a vote on with fish fish ticket and she's going to be able to like explain ah mufana wanga ah mona ah you zona zona okay we learn from from that situation we move on that's the zambia that i want you know Everybody is innocent until proven guilty. So this is all I had for you. It's been Mnalula, Mnalula, Muzuila Chwani, Mutozi Chwani, Kimanzi Wani, depending on where you're watch, uh, watching me from. And uh, I'll be back again some other time if I'm going to be alive. Because I'm back in Havana. You know, I can be a casualty. But it's okay. So long I get to like do my role and the next generation. Because the most important thing that I really want, it's not really about me looking for a job because I'm, I'm 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 okay i'm good i'm gucci i'm okay i'm not trying to lobby for, for like a job you know and uh i'm not trying to impress my elders i'm not trying to impress the people on top of me i'm trying to set a precedence of people behind me so if you're looking at this particular video and saying what's mona's ex uh you know exterior motive what is he trying to do is he trying to get a job? Is he trying to get some clout? No, 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 no. I'm trying to set the tone for the people behind me because this is what our older generations lacked. They were so selfish. They didn't really get to pass the baton to us so that we can hit the ground running. But this time around, right, my my age match, the people who are like my colleagues, were beginning to solve the problems that they created. But this time around, I want the people coming behind me to have it easier because everything that I, all the little things that I have, I literally have to, had to like sweat for it. Nobody gave me, you know, like I literally came up with my own capital. I, I you know, I struggled on my own and I didn't really have it easy. So my my the main reason why you see me here why i allegedly call myself the voice of the youths is so that i can set a tone for the people behind me because if i know that if i really get to like uh you know allow people to think in a certain way be patriotic to zambia and carry out certain functionalities as a patriotic citizen the whole entire country is going to be good you know so right now it's not about me impressing uh, people who are older than me it's about me guiding the next ones who are behind us if you know what i mean so this is what i'm trying to do anyway uh to aranda sana nga to aranda sana para six fia luvana because varanda ti if you call a fila luvana or just like they say amano ya fumile mui fuesa ya kuchulu so to all the people who don't really understand bamba we can all learn from 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 one another you know we need to work with the older generation you know and the older generation needs to work with us it's not really about competition yo take whatever i'm trying to compete in because you've you've got like this amazing rowing government and i'm trying to like displace you no once a one better chapel more babandi the older generation has got things that they can teach me i can learn from their experience you know they can also learn from the little experience that i have and we can all work symbiotically and just get to create this gigantic force of progress so it's not about the youths displacing the older generations we come in peace we come with all due respect we're just here to work together and see how we can find common ground and by the way when i'm 60 70 i do not ever want to compete with a 25 year old at that particular age because i know my time has already been utilized and i did what i had to do let the young people enjoy let the young people have opportunities let the young people do what they have to do if you know what i mean so do not really look at us saying ah i feel like jeffy ah manje ah you know let's work together let's work together because you know there's a lot of money for everybody you know so yeah that's all i had for you uh in case you've got any questions contributions i'm looking forward to like hearing from you come on for better stuff and swing you know you know we'll do what we have to do but otherwise i was very authentic i didn't really get to you know she took an appointment. She took an appointment because sometimes you know because when you get passionate sometimes so I get up in my setup. But I really hope I'm not trying to go that route. I'm not trying to go that way because you know my parents raised me to be respectful, but they also taught me to be inquisitive and ask questions. That's what they taught me. 
you know so in that vein i'm just saying by zambia especially by youth banandi let's take action right now tomorrow actually yesterday was the best time to start and this is the new dawn everybody has got freedom everybody has got the capabilities to do what they have to do we'll bail you out but just do things because you've got the genuine heart to let the people enjoy it's all about us progressively progressing together as a collection of citizens in zambia okay so yeah so thank you very much uh, have a great day and uh, you know be blessed be blessed tomorrow is a monday work extra hard find these opportunities because there are plenty of opportunities to be taken advantage of talk to you a little bit later good night